The Scooby-Doo franchise has persevered for over 50 years now, and consistently produced content all that time, and has been enjoyed for generations through TV shows, video games, movies, among others. The latest installment in this franchise was Velma, which ironically did not have Scooby-Doo in it. Unfortunately for them, it ended up being the worst rated cartoon in IMDb history, and third worst rated show overall. Yikes, but also well deserved. Velma was an attempt at a more mature tone for these classic characters. I do think the concept has potential, where the kids are all grown up and they have their own detective agency, where they're solving murder mysteries. Unfortunately, they went with the cliched adult comedy route, where for the most part they just say crude and gross things, and that alone is supposed to carry the joke, which results in a lot of it falling flat. They also relied pretty heavily on meta humor, which got old pretty quickly, where they were constantly calling out tropes and even making fun of their own target audience. Scooby-Doo has been in a more mature setting before, with the show Supernatural where the main characters end up getting sucked into a TV and find themselves in Scooby-Doo for an episode. Shenanigans from the Supernaturals universe end up getting dragged into the Scooby-Doo universe too, and since the show is for adults, it ends up being pretty intense. This episode was kind of randomly placed in season 13, so it's not like a crossover movie that we're used to seeing with Scooby-Doo, but you can tell the writers had a lot of fun with this and really respect the source material. They're also aware of the fact that Supernatural and Scooby-Doo have a different audience, but also know that adults still like cartoons, so they're able to strike a balance between the fun and goofy tone of Scooby-Doo and the more mature elements from Supernatural in a way that doesn't feel forced and is enjoyable. The episode jumps into the action right away, where Sam and Dean are fighting a stuffed dinosaur, which is admittedly goofy, but it sets up the tone for this episode. The two manage to burn it. It was attacking a pawn shop owner, and he's so grateful for being rescued that he lets them take something for free. Dean convinces Sam to let them take home a TV. Another man shows up who owns the shops on the street street except for this one shop, who comes sniffing around to see what all the commotion was about, and he's definitely not suspicious at all. But the two of them get the TV back to base, but when Dean turns it on, they end up getting sucked into the TV. So they're suddenly in a cartoon, and not just any cartoon, but Scooby-Doo, which Dean is really excited about because he's a big fan. Honestly, completely understandable. Sam is less enthusiastic about the situation though, and just wants to find a way to get out of here, but Dean is willing to play along, and figures that they'll probably be able to get out of there if they finish the episode. So they introduce them themselves to the Scooby gang. I love the way they portrayed the Scooby gang here. They're very kind and welcoming, and clearly a very tight-knit group. Dean is determined to keep them innocent, but he also hits on Daphne a lot and sees Fred as a rival, which Sam calls him out on, and she's obviously with Fred. Honestly, this single episode handles shipping a lot better than the entirety of season one of Velma. Dean realizes during the classic episode, A Night of Fright is No Delight, where Scooby inherits a fortune. Some time ago, he rescued a man from drowning in a fish pond, and he was so great that he included him in his will. Sam asks if he's dead now, which seems kind of obvious, they're talking about his will, and Scooby is set to inherit the fortune, but Fred is forced to announce that he passed away from cancer. But he's dead now, right? Uh, yeah, the cancer. The juxtaposition of Fred, who is a child-friendly character, talking about such a serious subject is actually pretty funny, and a good example of adult humor, instead of something that's immature and crass that's trying to pass off as adult. The brothers invite themselves along on the gang's adventure, thinking if they play along with the episode, they'll get home, but not before some cartoony shenanigans. There! There! Look how big my mouth is! Dean also challenges Fred to a race. His car somehow managed to get into the cartoon as well, and he wants to impress Daphne, so the two of them race to see who can get to the Colonel's mansion first. Although in the original episode, they actually had to take a boat to the mansion because it was on a secluded island, so they're taking liberties with the original episode, probably just to better accommodate the added characters. They arrive at the mansion, and Dean is having a good time, but Sam is still struggling with being in a cartoon. Although considering everything they encounter on a regular basis, it feels like this shouldn't be that far out there. The episode plays out more or less how it did originally, where according to the terms of the will, the gang have to spend the night at a haunted mansion, otherwise Scooby's claim to the inheritance would be forfeited. This must have been pretty fun for Frank Welker, who has consistently voiced Fred since the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You, and he gets to say some of the same lines from the original episode. Relax, Scooby. We'll spend the night with you. Now let's hit the sack. Relax, Scooby. 
We'll spend the night with you. Now let's hit the sack. Things take a shocking turn, however, when one of the other inheritors ends up brutally murdered. The gang treats it like just another mystery, which catches Sam off guard. But the gang insists there's a logical explanation for all of this, and Dean is determined to keep them pure and innocent, so he doesn't want them finding out anything about actual monsters. They're trying to regroup in the living room when they suddenly notice a shadowy figure outside, which turns out to be Cassiel. He came back from an adventure and saw the TV on with the episode playing, and the TV sucked him in too. Unfortunately for him, it was right when they started racing, so he was forced to play catch-up. Cass is also not excited about being stuck in a cartoon, and isn't too keen on the Scooby gang. Everyone splits up to look for clues. Dean begrudgingly goes with Daphne and Fred. Cass gets stuck with Scooby and Shaggy, which he isn't too happy about, which leaves Sam with Velma, who is trying and failing to deny the fact that she has a crush on Sam. Velma in recent iterations of Scooby-Doo has been a pretty hardcore denier of the supernatural, and believes such things are ridiculous, which obviously puts her at odds with Sam, since he's literally from a show called Supernatural. However, that wasn't part of her personality in the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You, which is the show they specifically are in right now. She was often skeptical, but she wasn't against the idea of the supernatural. There's a very logical explanation for all this. Quick, tell me. The place is haunted. Thanks a lot. Even in this exact episode, she seemed disappointed that the house wasn't actually haunted in the end. How do you like that? We spend a night of fright for some worthless money in a haunted house that wasn't even haunted. Although in the end it does imply that there is something going on here, when a bone floats over to Scooby, and the episode ends before that gets explained away, it was probably just a joke, but it also implies that the supernatural was always an element in Scooby-Doo, even when the monsters were just guys in masks. I'm just saying. So they all search the mansion. Sam ends up telling Velma that ghosts are real, and she of course doesn't believe him, only for them to get chased by one. And there's a big chase scene where they play the classic theme song, which I appreciate. It's also nice to have some levity given the more intense scenes, and they can just have fun with the setting. They end up getting cornered in a room, and Fred tries to tackle the monster. I like how they made him a man of action, but he ends up getting thrown into a wall and has a nosebleed. I don't like the Scooby gang getting hurt, and it just gets worse. The ghost throws Shaggy out of a window, and he ends up breaking his arm. It could've been worse, but Cass jumped out the window after him, and managed to soften the blow, but not enough for him to avoid getting hurt. Sam and Dean stop the ghost with iron, but the gang is rattled by the experience. The guys decide that they have to tell them that this phantom is not like the ones they fought before, and that it and the supernatural in general are real, causing the gang to panic and have an existential crisis. They probably could've said that they were from another world, and the monster followed them, without telling them that monsters are real or they're in a cartoon. Is that really any crazier than ghosts being real? Dean gives the gang an inspirational speech, which calms them down and gets them excited to take on this new threat. Sam tries to give them a bunch of weapons, but Dean nixes that idea, and instead has Fred do what he does best, make a trap. The two of them are able to smooth things over, mostly because Fred complimented Dean, but it's nice that he's finally warming up to Fred. So they set the trap for the Phantom, and make Scooby, Shaggy, and Cass be the bait, even though Shaggy has a broken arm. And interestingly enough, in the original episode, Daphne Freddy and Velma were the bait, so it seems unnecessary to put the guys through that. The plan ends up going awry, but they have a backup plan, so they're able to catch the ghost in a salt circle. It turns out to be a young child, who is being used by the guy who came into the pawn shop after the dinosaur attacked. The owner of the shop has been refusing to sell, so he wanted to scare away the pawn shop owner by forcing him to sell due to a haunting. He has the pocket knife that the child's soul is bound to, and he put it into the plush dinosaur and then later the TV that the guys took home so the ghost could take out the guys who were getting too close. But the child is actually friendly, and just wants to move on so he can be with his father. So they promise to help him if he can get them back home. But they decide before they leave they have to set the cartoon back to the way it was. So they tell the Scooby gang that the monsters weren't real and they were fooled, and there's no such thing as a supernatural, which the gang are relieved to learn. So they pull the mask off, revealing the original villain from the episode, and Cassiel heals Shaggy's arm. I forgot to mention that Cass is an angel. It's not that relevant to the episode though. Not sure why he didn't do that before, but everything's back to normal. I told you, you big lug. There's no such thing as the supernatural. So the gang go on their way, but not before Velma steals a kiss from Sam. This makes Dean pretty jealous considering the fact that he spent the entire episode chasing Daphne, and now he thinks he should have gone after Velma, but she was clearly into Sam the whole time, so I'm not sure how far that would have gone. The guys make it back home, and they talk about how cool their experience was, but Dean smashes the TV to get to the knife, although he probably could have just disassembled and put it back together, but I guess this way is more dramatic. So they free the ghost and head back to the pawn shop, arriving just in time to stop the owner from selling. 
calling. Dean's also wearing an ascot, which is a cute touch. They confront him about using the ghost to try to scare off business owners and buy up the properties for himself, and he smugly tells them that no one will believe them, thinking he's in the clear. But it turns out the guys were one step ahead of him, and hacked his financials to prove that he hasn't been paying his taxes, so he gets taken away. And he complains about how he would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those meddling kids. A fitting and fun way to end the episode. Dean tries to mimic Scooby's outro, with some mixed results, but it was pretty cute. So that was Scooby Natural, a filler episode in a long-running TV show that ended up being really fun. They didn't have to do this, but they put a lot of effort and heart into it, which I really appreciate. They went on record saying they wanted to respect the legacy of the cartoon and these characters, and I think they accomplished what they set out to do. It feels really genuine. I do think considering the fact that they were being transported to the original cartoon, it would have been nice if they had kept their personalities from that time, but it seems like they're more interested in keeping in line with modern Scooby-Doo, which is fine too. And even though these characters were in an intense situation, they always stayed true to themselves, which I think helped make this episode work so well. Overall, it was a great episode, and it was interesting to see these characters interact. But that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy Scooby Natural? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to our members. Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Adam K, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Eric Griffin, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Bandito Bane, Dakari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweetcream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, Dash Hound, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Miranda Sinistra, Butcher 7 Actual, Felix Bam, Soundboy 00, Owen Wildish, Lil, Player Zero, Kitsune Fiora, Can We Pretend That, and Ninja Rex. Thank you all so much for your support, and if you'd like to support the channel as a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this content, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, and that part's free. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.